So all I've done so far is I've just taken the right hand side fairing off uh, and now I'm going to have to remove this coolant bottle. So on this coolant bottle there's going to be this little plastic cover and that is held on the bottle by those two screws and it just comes off. So I'll take it off for better view here and then the coolant bottle is held by those two screws and now the top one here which sits quite tight uh, actually it doesn't and here we have it that's the coolant bottle removed cool now they say you're gonna have to remove some oil or all the oil but I don't know if it's actually necessary to remove the oil I'm gonna just put a basin under the engine and hope that that's gonna be enough okay folks so there's 10 8 millimeter bolts holding this clutch cover and I got them loose with the ratchet uh, and now I'm just gonna use my um, impact gun to quickly remove them Okay, some of those bolts are a bit longer, others are a bit shorter, so I use this uh, foam to keep them in order. And now hopefully I'm going to be able to remove this bloody cover. Sadly, I'm going to have to use a dead blow hammer, I think, because it sits there pretty damn tight. I'm giving it a bit of a tappy tap action. I'm going to use this frame here, pry it from the bottom. There we go. Okay. Ah, it comes off. Excellent. Now, I'm hoping the gasket is intact and the gasket is pretty damn good which I like. They say to um, remove the clutch you've got to drain the oil but you actually don't because having the bike on the side stand you're gonna lose maybe 300 mils of oil and then you can you can work on the clutch so that's no problem. Okay next I'm gonna be removing uh, the clutch springs and obviously you wanna go in a cross pattern yep. Alright, once again I'm going to try to keep those in order, but first I'm going to remove the pressure plate. Alright, you can also check the bearing here, there's a little bearing here in the middle, you can check if it operates smoothly. Okay, so now I'm going to remove all the clutch plates and that's going to be both uh, friction plates and steels. And an interesting fact is about those clutches from Kawasaki is that the last plate, I mean the first plate from the outer side, which is the last plate counting from the engine, is always offset a bit, so it's not installed like this, it's installed like that. Anyway, so I'm going to remove all the plates and stack them in order. This is really nice because you've got a possibility of grabbing many of them and just pulling them out at once. And then at some point you're going to have to use magnets or picks to get them out. So let me just grab my magnets. And uh, there we go. I've got another two. And just steel. A few moments later. Okay, so to remove that nut, I thought I'm going to have to use 35 mil socket. But look what's going to happen here. 35 just doesn't want to go in 
And weirdly, 36 is there somewhat loose, but I'm going to try 36. Okay, so I've used this clutch holding tool. This is a universal uh, type tool, and I'm hoping that if I just lean it here on the foot peg, have a look here, I just land it here on the foot peg, and I'm hoping this is going to hold the inner hub well enough so I can remove that nut from there. Anyway, 36 millimeter nut, and let's see how it goes. Boom. That was literally one spin, and the nut comes off. Take the tool off. All right, peeps, so now you're gonna be removing those two. Uh, they call it torque limiter springs. So they were, that's what they look like. And they were sitting on each other like that. Okay. Let me just double check if that's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. So you remove those two. And now at that point, you'll be able to remove this inner hub here. So that's what it looks like. And look, it's got those protruding teeth, three teeth at the back. And this is because those teeth actually engage with, let me just magnify it. So you see those three teeth. Here's the first one, second one, and third one. Those actually engage with those holes here. Right, so next you're going to remove that washer here, or ring. Uh, it just pulls out. Have a look, it's got those teeth inside. And at the back, it's got those two lines. So you know, that's the back side. Okay, and after removing of that, you can just pull out the whole inner hub. So it all comes out with the remaining plates that we didn't remove before. So that's what you've got here. That's what it looks like there. So let's get this off. Okay, now there's this plate here. And this is something you've got to remove too, but it won't just come out by hand. So having those picks is also a good idea. Again, you just pull them out like this. And that's what it looks like. Okay, at that point, you can just remove this I think they call it primary driven gear or something like that. Okay. Um, and this is, by the way, a good time to examine your um, clutch basket or primary driven gear because you can have those, those little notches here um, from the plates and you can always gently file them to make them a bit smoother without removing too much material which will uh, improve the action of your clutch just a bit. So here we have it, peeps. This is your um, auxiliary chain or alternators chain, if you will. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's got two tensioners. There's the bottom one here and the top tensioner with the slide here. And there is a way of adjusting it. There's a little nut here and a bolt. And uh, depending on the position of that uh, bolt, this tensioner gets uh, closer towards the chain, making it a bit tighter. So as you can see at the moment, I've got some slack there. Um, and there's another thing here on the bottom tensioner. <clears throat> Look, it's got some little movement here. And you know, I, I don't know those bikes at all, but... You see this? That little movement here, maybe that's causing those, um, those rattling noises on the idle. Who knows? But anyway, so the way to adjust this uh, upper tensioner is you're going to have to loosen up those two bolts here. Those are 10 millimeter bolts. Um, and they say then you should be able to adjust that uh, tensioning nut here. But the problem is this was so stuck I couldn't even move it at all. So I had to remove this uh, tensioner completely. And that's done pretty easily. You just basically remove those two bolts and it comes out. And then I have to put it in the vise and turn the top bolt in a vise. Because there was no way I could turn it with a 10mm spanner in here. Now, 
what they're saying is you can get this 10 millimeter nut slightly further out and you see the thing is the further it goes out okay the more you can bring this tensioner in meaning the more tension you can put on this bloody chain all right so if i've got this top bolt screwed in as close as possible to this tensioner then i've got lots of slack you see because there is a massive gap between the chain and the tensioner right but if you turn this bolt counterclockwise a few turns at some point you're going to have to be turning with your spanner okay but if you keep turning counterclockwise this brings this tensioner down it's going that way putting more uh, tension on that chain that would be the correct tension so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna have to put some Loctite on both of those thre on the threads of both of those bolts so I'll remove them just for a second don't have to go nuts with it you need just a bit okay let's get this bolt in and now I'm gonna do the same with that one here I'll remove that and put some Loctite on that one there as well basically this is all pretty tight now and now to secure it you're gonna have to hold the, the bolt in place and then you're gonna be using a 12 millimeter spanner on this lock nut to bring it down There we go. Okay. And at that point you can torque up those two um, tensioners bolts. And those are 12 Newton meters. All right, so 12 Newton meters. There's the first one. There's the second one. Uh, that's the way you do it. Um, if you want to replace this chain, it's actually very easy. All you have to do is just remove the top tensioner which is removing those two bolts and it comes out removing the bottom tensioner which is removing those two bolts and it comes out and then removing uh, this rod here and that is held by just, just one bolt here and then removing uh, those two sprockets uh, and you remove them by simply taking off this circlip here and this circlip here and then they just slide out so replacing this chain uh, from that point would be another I guess 15 minutes of work um, so very easy all right, peeps, so here it is. The first thing that goes on is the uh, primary driven gear or main basket. And at the back of it, you're gonna see those four holes. So you want to make sure that the holes align with those two protruding bits, so to speak. So that goes on. And by the way, you're gonna have the con rod here. So it's gonna be tricky to put it in, but it will go in. And let's just make sure those okay I'm close all right so once again there we go come on will you go in or not there we go so you see the pins behind those two holes are engaged with the basket. It all sits here now. Excellent. So then the next thing that goes in is that part. And it goes like that. Alright, so the next part is this. And that goes in on those splines here. As you can see, it's got those teeth here. So that just goes in like that that's in 
then you've got this collar here and uh, you've got those two lines on this collar and those have to go in inwards and so this part has three teeth here and those teeth have to engage with those three holes here so I've got one at the top and so I'm gonna turn this like that and it's nicely engaged okay what goes on now is those two star springs or torque limiter springs and the way you install them is that you've got one of them like that and the other one goes on like that so if you've got those smaller teeth here you don't install it like that it's actually impossible to do it install it like that okay so you should have one two three four five six six of those smaller teeth and then that just goes in like that okay it sits nicely all right and then at that point you're going to have to put this nut back on and this is going to be a bit of a bummer because this has to be well the service manual says you've got to replace that nut i don't know why would they say that because it's perfectly reusable but the bummer is that you have to tighten this nut to 135 newton meters so you're going to need a clutch holding tool uh, to hold the hub here in place and then using the torque range you're going to tighten it up to 135 newton meters Okay. All right then, and the last on the last plate it goes a bit goes in a bit differently, so it wouldn't go in like that. It goes like that slightly offset so this goes on like that and now is the springs and that's always a bit of a tough job to put them on because the bolts are actually very short and you need to press the spring and at the same time trying to engage this uh, this bolt with the threads all right so what I'm gonna do just to help myself I'm gonna use uh, this rattle gun on the slowest setting and I'm going to align the thread of the bolt there we go right that's cool and then the rest I'm going to do by hand Okay, time to torque it all up. And guess what? This is just nine Newton meters they want for it. So I've got a torque range here, and it's literally just that. Just a tiny little twist. Now they say the title of RTV needs to be applied here where the crankcase is meat, so that's what I'm doing now. Okay. Okay, so the clutch cover goes in. Uh, so those dowel pins, there's one here and there's one here. Okay, you need to make sure they go in in those holes. Okay, so now I'm going to just torque it up to 10 Newton meters in cross pattern. I'm going to start here. That's a 10. That's a 10. That's a 10. So now the bottle goes on.
Okay then, so uh, touch cover on, uh, idle adjuster, nice and secure, um, coolant bottle there. Uh, I've also topped up the oil because I've lost about half a glass, so ready to start up. Thanks for watching, cheers.